Hey everyone, we are looking at differentiability and continuity, specifically one type of problem. Namely, we are going to use one-sided limits to find the values of the constants a and b that make the piecewise function f differentiable at x equals 1. And then we'll check things by graphing. So for differentiability to happen, that means we want this to be this nice smooth curve between those two parts. And obviously, if it's differentiable, we know we have continuity. Now, we did a similar problem to this in the past where we had continuity but not differentiability because we didn't know about that then. And it would be these weird graphs coming together all pointy and they wouldn't make good roller coasters. We're making a good roller coaster here. You won't go flying off the tracks. So <clears throat> we're going to start with continuity. In order for continuity to happen, this is just like we did before where the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the left side is the a over x part. And then the right side, since we're approaching 1 from the right, is the 12 minus bx squared part. And you all know me well enough to know that I'm strict on that notation. We need this limit notation. These two functions aren't equal to each other, except they're going to be e limit, they're going to equal each other as you approach one from each side. It's going to come together like that. So the moment we plug our one in, though, we can drop our limit notation. So I'm going to take my limits by plugging in the one. So I have a over one, or just a, and then 12 minus, oops, not b minus erasable pens for the win, 12 minus b times 1 square, or 12 minus b. So now I have one equation. Well, shoot, I have one equation but two unknowns. Now, if I picked any pair of values a and b that made this equation true, I would have continuity, but I wouldn't have differentiability. So for the differentiability, that's our next piece. So just labeling this, differentiability. It's hard to spell if you're, you know, trying to think on the spot like this. So we need the limit as we approach one from the left of f prime of x, and then from the right as well. So we need our slopes to equal each other. So instead of just coming together like in any old fashion like we had before, they need to come together with like a smooth transition between the two. And the continuity has to happen where it's like, I could have the same slopes and it would look something like that with a step con discontinuity. That's no good either. That's not differentiable really, since you need both sides to exist. Okay. So I'm going to take the derivative. Remember that a over x is really a x to the negative 1. So taking the derivative of a x to the negative 1, it's negative a x to the negative 2. And I still have my limit notation because I haven't taken it yet. And then on the right, I'm taking the derivative of 12 minus b x squared. So I have negative 2 b x. Remember, you don't have to quotient rule or product rule any of these because A and B are just numbers. They could be like a 3 and a 7 for all we know. Okay, oops, but I made a mistake. And this is the mistake y'all make all the time for getting limit notation. I was so concentrated on making my derivative happen that I forgot my limit notation. I'm sure none of you have ever done that kind of mistake before. I'm actually kind of just mess, glad I messed that up just to prove the point of like, hey, watch out for that. Okay. I'm going to plug in my 1 to both of these, so then I end up with a negative a times 1 to the negative 2 is just 1. And then plugging 1 in for x, we get negative 2b. So a, so a equals 2b. So now I have a system of equations. a equals 12 minus b and a equals 2b. So that means that 2b is equal to 12 minus b. So that means 3b is 12 and b is 4. And if b is 4, that means a is 8. Okay, so here's our a and our b that hopefully make this function continuous and differentiable. So I put this into my y equals and did the divide by 
x less than or equal to 1, do you remember doing that? Check out the piecewise functions video if you don't remember how to do that. And I've already set my window up to make things nice. So here I am. It looks continuous. It looks smooth. So it looks like I've been successful. So that is making differentiability happen and continuity as well for a piecewise function.